What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Poor Man's Guide to Building a Food Truck, the channel where if you're anything like me, an average Joe, no electrical, no construction, no plumbing knowledge, and you've always had the dream of building your own business, getting it running, your rolling food trailer, whatever it might be, but you've always had a little bit of doubt about your own ability to be able to do such a project, this channel might be for you. I'm in that boat. I don't have any of that prior experience, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. And this is going to be the journey for me and what I have done so far to get my business up and running, which I hope to have it running early next year, maybe spring, summertime of 2022. So in today's video, we're going to be going through what I did in order to get my electrical working, how I got it from the inlet boxes on the front of the trailer, underneath the trailer, and then up through the electrical panel, which you can see right there, and how I did that. And maybe it could help one of you guys. Full disclosure, like I said, I'm not a professional. If you're looking for professional advice, if you're looking for a professional insulation, this is not the channel. This is simply uh, my experience and what I have done as an average Joe, like I said, and able to get um, these parts of my build complete. If you want professional advice, Go and look on YouTube. The guy that I follow is Frank Baltieres of Rolling Burritos, Rolling Burritos Food Truck. Um, if you want really good detailed advice on how specifically to do it, if your trailer isn't like mine, he's the guy to watch. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right guys, so step number one is this right here, which is at the front of the trailer. This is the 50 amp Reliance inlet box which um, I showed you on a previous video that I had um, put on the front of my trailer. And in another video of mine, I showed you how to make this extension cord right here, which is plugged into my house right now, giving temporary power to the trailer. This guy, as you can find, um, it's now available, I believe on Amazon, back on walmart.com. It's really hard to find for a little while, uh, but I will leave the link in the description for this and everything else that I show you in the video right below. So you guys can just click it and you have access to it right away. This is super easy to install. I'm going to show you now what it looks like underneath. It's just got a couple of screws that hold it right in place. You just got to pre-drill the hole um, where the uh, power cable is going to be going into. So let's check out underneath. All right, guys. So looking at it from underneath the trailer, as you can see, you've got three screws that hold the box in place. One, two, and three. And this is my power cable or my service cable which is supplying power to the trailer going into that box right there and this is just a little bit of insulation that i've put on there to make sure it doesn't get nicked uh, as we're driving so like i said this is super easy to install what you will need to remember guys is that on the inside of this box you've got uh, four little inlets that the um, cables that are inside the insulation can be inserted to there is a uh, green for ground there is a white for the neutral and you have two um, power um, power inlets right here and they are marked x and y um, it is important because it will depend on which one you choose it doesn't really matter you can use x or y it doesn't matter um, but you need to match up whenever you make the um, the generator plug the the one that's plugged into my house right now whenever you make that plug it has the same concept so um, the power can go either into x or y so whichever one you choose i believe i put mine on x uh, on the inlet box if you line it uh, and you line your black power cable into the x whenever you make your diy generator cable just make sure that you line it up to x so x to x or y to y however you'd like to do it but just keep that in mind all right guys so we are now underneath the trailer and this is the part that got a little bit tricky for me so because mine is an older trailer it did not have uh, pre-drilled holes in these little uh, struts that go along the bottom of the trailer so i kind of had to think outside the box a little bit what i ended up doing was just putting these anchors which i found these at lowe's they really weren't all that expensive i'll leave a link in the description again so you guys can get access to them real easy and all i had to do was um just drill pre-drill a hole where i could put the screw and it's got uh i'll show you this one right here it's got a nut on the other side the screw just goes right through the hole and we tighten it up and then the um, the actual anchor just kind of hangs right down here once i had all of them installed as you can see they run all the way to the back of the trailer it was pretty uh straightforward just to pull the power cable all the way through those anchors and then up through the bottom of the trailer now this 
might not work for you or maybe you're lucky and you have holes that are already right there in the the metal struts and you can just thread the cable right through um, but for me i was not so lucky i had to get a little bit creative and try to figure out a way of how i was going to run this cable down there safely um, because of course we don't want this falling on the road as we're driving because this is what is supplying power to the entire trailer so again you guys might have uh, another idea you might have another way of doing it which is great please feel free to leave that feedback in the comments this is just how me personally i kind of thought was the best way to do it so that's how we ran it underneath the trailer so then coming to the tail end of the trailer, you can see the cable runs down. It's got a little bit of slack in it, but that's not too much of a problem. I can pin it if I need to. Uh, and the cable just runs all the way up and through the bottom. I had to use a, a little step bit right there just to drill through. I just drilled uh, piece by piece. I didn't want to make it too big because I didn't want to have a ton of silicone hanging around it. And just thread the cable up through there and then through um, to the inside of the trailer. Make sure that when you do put this in, make sure that you silicone it and make it watertight because, um, especially down here in Florida in the summertime, we get a lot of rain. So when I actually installed this, it was in the summer it, uh, and it was raining a lot. So make sure that you silicone this right away as soon as it goes in. And that is how we run the cable from the front to the back. And on the inside of the trailer guys this is what it looks like so it's coming up from underneath like we just saw and then i just made another hole right there in the plywood to feed the the cable through up through the wall to make it look nice and clean you could do this on the exterior if you wanted to <clears throat> you just put like that um that like plastic casing around it and you can kind of just move it up the wall and then you can put it right into the side of the generator uh sorry of the uh, electrical box but I didn't really like the look of that um, and after watching a bunch of videos online this is kind of what most people go with just to make it look nice and clean on the outside which mine is not clean I got my handprints all over it so that is where the cable comes out and the last step really guys is just like I said feeding that cable through the wall you can um, you can try and do your best to just kind of push it up through the wall but me I had to fish it so I had to put we have a gap right here um, about two or three inches I had to push a line uh, wire down, tie it on, and then pull this up, and then gradually uh, move it up into the uh, electrical panel, which is set right there. The electrical panel has a little um, knockout in it, so you just literally just knock it right out. That's what it, that's why it's called a knockout, and you can feed that cable right through the top, and that's what's going to feed power to your trailer. Like I said at the start of the video guys, I'm not a professional, so I'm not going to go through the details of exactly how I wired up the electrical panel. The only advice I can give you is just go online, go on forums, look on YouTube, and just copy and paste. Um, if you do that, you really can't go too far wrong, um, as long as you make sure that you just got it wired up correctly. One of the biggest things that I would say is worth its weight in gold is this little thing right here which is an electrical uh, outlet tester um, what it does is you just plug it into the outlet and it will actually light up accordingly as to whether you did it correctly or not so for this one uh, it'll tell you if you have an open ground an open neutral an open heart um, or if you did it correctly if you got it correctly then they'll have uh, two orange lights right there um, this was like four or five dollars from Harbor Freight I showed you guys in a previous video and again I'll leave the link below so you can check it out it really is worth this weight in gold because you don't want to go touching stuff uh, that's live um, without knowing if you did it right. Um, so make sure that you have one of these. And just to give you a brief example, guys, to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let me just go ahead and put these breakers on right here. This is my switch outlet for my fridge. And then as soon as I hit this switch right here, you can see we've got two orange lights, which means everything's good. And it shows you exactly um, if you did it right or if you did it wrong. So. There we go, it makes it easy to troubleshoot. And that's gonna be all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Um, the response lately has been really, really great. I've had some really good feedback. A lot of people out there that are in similar situations to me, that maybe don't have a ton of money, that are working off a real tight budget, but still wanna own their own business and operate their own business. Um, if like, again, if you're coming here for real solid knowledge and advice, this isn't the place. Uh, this is really just to document the journey that I'm going on and see how feasible it is. And if you're in a similar boat to me where you maybe don't have that prior knowledge, uh, maybe I can help. Uh, so please like, follow, subscribe, ask questions. And until next time, thanks very much.